Scott, in order to understand causation, one of the keys is predictability, because if you have cause, you need to have predictions. Uh, there's this classical uh, paradox, Newcomb's paradox, which seems to deal with prediction, which seem, seems to make prediction almost uh, very difficult to understand. How, how does that work? Yeah, so I think there's hardly anything that focuses the mind better on you know questions of what is causation, predictability, uh, free will, and so forth than this Newcomb paradox. So it was proposed by a physicist, Simon Newcomb, in the 1960s. The way it works is that uh, you imagine that there are two sealed boxes. The first box has either a million dollars in it or else nothing. The second box definitely has a thousand dollars in it. Okay, now you have a choice. You can either take the first box only, or you can take both boxes. Okay, now here's the catch. There is a super intelligent predictor that had a model of your brain, and it has already foreseen what you're going to do. And if the predictor predicted that you would take the first box only, then it put a million dollars in that box. Mm -hmm. If it predicted that you would take both boxes, then it left the first box empty. Okay, we can imagine that this predictor has played the game hundreds of times before with you, with other people, and it's been right every time, yeah, or even almost every time. Okay, and now the question is, what do you do? On the one hand, you know, it seems completely obvious that you should take the first box only because everyone who's taken it has wound up a million dollars richer, right? Uh, on the other hand, it seems completely obvious that you should take both boxes because by the time you're making this choice, the million dollars is either in the first box or it isn't. Nothing you do could possibly affect you know that whether it's there or not, and you're what whether regardless of whether it's there, you're going to get a thousand dollars more by also okay. taking the second box. So why should why shouldn't you do that? Okay, and then you know you know a third option would be to say you know I reject this entire setup as meaningless because if this predictor exists in the first place, then you know by assumption you know I, I guess I don't have free will. So why are we even talking about <laughs> what I'll do or won't do? The predictor has already determined it. All right, so people have. You know, there's actually an immense literature on this problem for 40 years. Mm -hmm. Philosophers have been arguing about, about it. And, you know, these days there seems to be a growing consensus in favor of one boxing, as it's called. Mm -hmm. Just taking the first box only, right? Which makes sense, right? Because, you know, people who take the one box always do wind up a million dollars richer, yeah. right? But the hard part is to justify how one boxing could possibly be rational. Because, um, you know, how can your decision to take the first box only possibly affect what's in that box? How can it cause a million dollars to be in there when it, you know, wouldn't have been there otherwise? Because right? the predictor acted before you. Okay, so uh, people have all sorts of convoluted explanations of how this could be. I can tell you the only explanation that makes sense to me personally, you know. So I came up with this and then I found out that someone else had, you know, independently, but, um, you know, the idea is, you know, you know, think about this predictor. You know, how accurate would it really have to be, right? You could, you could base your decision of whether to take one or two boxes on anything, like the number of letters in the name of your childhood friend, you know, any stupid thing you like, right? So if the predictor is really going to foresee your decision, it will have to know everything about you. It will have to have a complete model of your brain so that it can simulate you, you know, sort of as well as you can sim, you know, as you can be yourself. Hey, but in that case, I say, why is the predictor simply not bringing into existence a second copy or instantiation of you? Okay, but in that case, you know, when you're sitting here contemplating, you know, whether to take one box or two boxes, how do you know that you are not, in fact, the predictor? You know, that you are not the simulated version being run in the predictor's mind. And in that case, of course, your choice to take the one box can affect if the money is there or not. <laughs>